the very latest. Good morning. Thanks for being with Good us. Morning. First of all, I want to start off by asking, why is it so expensive to train one rebel fighter? Well, there's a lot of background that goes into They've got to do a lot of background checks before they do the training, and it takes a great number of U.S. trainers to actually you know, put a pro program together. We're working with Jordan as well as Turkey, so we have to maintain bases. We have to maintain training facilities. That's at least what the Pentagon is telling us, why it's so expensive. Four million per fighter is very, very expensive. And then we're training them, and apparently we're not protecting them. They've been captured, and you were just mentioning yes. they were asking for protection. Yeah, the big news this last week here is that um, there was one of the leaders, one of the original um, you know, U.S. trained guys, that the U.S. really had a lot of, um, they really had a lot of praise to say about this guy. He was actually really good. He was, you know, getting really good information to our um, our, our fighters and our planes so we could coordinate bombing and whatnot. And the New York Times reported that they had talked with him um, late last or early last week. They heard from him on Tuesday and that he had asked the U.S. trainers if you were going to please start protecting us and our fighters. And they did not get a response back from the um, folks, the CIA that are fighting over there. And, you know, two short days later, he was, in fact, kidnapped. This is according to sources on the ground, Wall Street Journal, Long War Journal, as well as New York Times, all reporting that he was kidnapped. So he was part of this group that they called Division 30, and that consisted of roughly 54 trained U.S. trained fighters in his group, along with a number of others who weren't specifically trained but had joined the coalition to fight against And them. this goes back to the beginning when we were going to start training them. It was controversy from that, from the beginning, there was controversy to train them. Yeah. The thing that people were saying were against it was like, we need to make sure they're protected so they don't get a hold of the tools that were giving them, the weapons that were giving them. It's just yes. what happened now. Exactly. And we have to give credit to ISIS here. Most people don't want to give them a lot of credit, but what they've been able to do against the U.S. and against Assad and their partners in the region, they're able to say, look, this is the center of gravity. What we can go after and what we can exploit is we go into a town and say they capture these these um, ter you know these guys that we train they're going to be completely they're going to be I mean waterboarding they're going to wish that was going to be their punishment they're going to be tortured but when they go to t come into a new town they're able to you know convert these people to you know their form of Islam and that's uh, that's a dangerous place. So to we're be. flat out of time but what should America's role be moving forward? You know, I think we just kind of listened to what um, DIA, D um, Defense Intelligence um, General Mike Flynn came out. He just retired, and he said what he said, stop. Just stop. We need to get an end plan. We need a strategy. And until then, we just need to stop. All right, Kim Lee DeBlack, thanks for being with us.